All right, welcome back. After last week's Chinese pantry essentials in bottles, this week we're introducing you to all the Chinese sauces in jars. As you can see, I got a quite an impressive collection here because I'm um, I'm big on sauces, and I believe every individual unique sauce brings that extra ounce of flavor. Sometimes I add something not on the recipe, and it ended up having a very uh, creative way of expressing my idea in a lot of the dishes. So. Without further ado, let me introduce you to my best friends in the sauce industry. So, <laughs> babe, where do I start? That's a question. That that's a very good question. I will start from the left. Such a hard one, right? Okay. So the first one here is a salted egg paste. So generally speaking, this sauce is widely used in some of the pastries. It gives you that、um, rich flavor from the egg yolk, but also since it's salted, so it's another layer. Act as a good contrast to any of the of your sweet dessert. This could、uh, you could find this. Paste used in some of the desserts, like the sweetheart pastry or the red bean salted egg yolk pastry. So yeah, it's a great, fantastic way、um, you can incorporate in any of your、uh, puff pastries or anything like that. Yep. So that's the first one, and this one is. Really, something、um, called young bamboo shoots, but it has a unique, almost like overwhelming taste. If you, it's your first time you're trying this, you might find it's really hard to,、uh, <laughs> really hard to kind of gauge the taste. But it adds a flavor of, because、um, it's based in the chili oil. And it's a unique seasoning that you can find in the river snail rice noodles. They give you a package of it, and the reason why it gives you that strong taste is actually from the young bamboo shoots. So it's not the river snail that quote unquote stink. It's really the young bamboo shoots has this strong flavor. So yeah, you can tell I love it, and、um, it's really kind of towards the bottom of the jar. And、um, whenever we see the chance, we'll probably restock this. And the, another creative way of using this sauce is saute this with some shredded pork. It goes very well with shredded red meats. So it, it's it's a good saute ingredients. The next thing here is a sesame paste. So this is one of the fundamental sauce that you will use in your sesame sesame soy noodle. Because this is one of the two ingredients that you would add to your noodle is one sesame paste and two soy sauce. So this is widely used in a noodle dish that's from Wuhan, China. It's called rogan mian, which this is the main ingredient as well. And in the bottle, you can see you have this oil and the sesame paste kind of separated. Before you use, you might want to stir around to give you that smooth paste texture instead of just getting the sesame. Sesame oil on top. We love the sesame noodle. Okay, and I guess one of the empty jars that I showed here, we just finished it yesterday in some beef noodle soup. So this chili garlic sauce, which you can also find in some of the bottles here, it's from diff two different、um, two different brand. I and I personally like this Li Kim Ki、uh, a little bit more because it gives you that chunks of garlic that you might necessarily. Find in this、um, chili garlic sauce. So this is the one that's the same brand, the Rooster brand, from、uh, similar to your sriracha here. So I would personally recommend、um, this brand, chili garlic sauce. Yeah. So if you take a look at those two, they're from the same brand from your Rooster with your sriracha. Well, both of them are good. I just personally I prefer the other one.、Uh, it gives you stronger garlic taste. Okay, since we are here, so the sriracha. I'm sure a lot of you might be really familiar with the sriracha sauce. It's、um, it's essential to a lot of the Asian dish here. And quite honestly, I find it interesting that we never saw this. Bottle of sauce in China.、Um, so this is one of the interesting. 
It's um, I gotta say, it's probably only outside of China would use this sauce. But personally, I find it's great. So um, I have no complaint of, of, of it at all. And quite frankly, it's part of my pantry items already. So you know. It's a special place for this, and if you haven't checked out the beef shank recipes episode, I'll link it on the upper right, so you can check out that. You can see where I abused this、uh, sriracha sauce on a lot of the beef shank recipes. So the next one on the shelf is this is called green pepper shiitake mushroom sauce. So this is fantastically goes fantastically with some fresh made rice, and this is really you put it on top. It's really tasty. It gives you that umami flavor from shiitake, and also it's refreshing from the green pepper. So I would say totally goes well with a bowl of white rice. And you you don't need anything else. You need the paste and a bowl of freshly made rice. Perfect, perfect, perfect. The next thing here, I'm gonna introduce two of them together, which is、um, one of this here is a bean curd fermented fermented bean curd from Wang Zhihe, and another one is a sweet bean paste. So I bought those two together because I was trying to make the jam bean,、uh, where you mix those two together as your seasoning for the wrap. So jam bean is similar to crepe. You cook the、um, you cook the wrap in a very hot surface or round surface, and you kind of spread them around to form this very thin layer of your crepe. And you、um, you can add any. Types of toppings on top, and it will wrap it up. Normally, I add beef shank to it, and some people、um, make、uh, crispy doughs in it or any kind of、uh, deep fried crisps. Crisps in there.、Um, sometimes a cracker egg. So yeah, those two are your two essential sauces for making that. But I didn't end it up trying that yet. But another thing of you, a great use of this fermented bean curd paste is you can add one or two chunks of it because it comes in chunks, and I'm not sure if you can see it. So it looks like if you played mahjong before,、um, it looks like those mahjong pieces. So that. Big. Um, you you add one or two chunks to、um, any of your braised red meat, like when you cook the pork feet or you cook beef or pork pork belly. You added a little bit of this. It's great for the color. It's great for the taste. So that's my personal secret sauce for cooking red meat. And this one, zhu hou jiang, it's zhu hou paste. As you can see, they recommended cook with chunks of potatoes and some type of pork or beef. That's how I personally cook them as well. So this is perfect for、um, beef. You add a little two tablespoons of this、um, when you cook the braised beef. And the next thing is really the one of the most important sauce in Sichuan, China area. The chili sauce here. It's fermented bean sauce, and a lot of times you will find、um, people. From Sichuan area, add this to any type of sauteed dish because it's a fundamental taste flavor that defines the、uh, tribe of Sichuan dish, which we we categorize them as Chuan Cai. Cai means the type of dish, and Chuan means the region. So Chuan Cai is any dish from the Sichuan area or adjacent state,、um, well, adjacent province. So yeah, and some of the hot pot.、Uh, Hot pot paste also has this fermented bean paste as well. Okay, and another recipe you will find yourself using this in a lot of sweet and sour dish、uh, is plum sauce. So it's like you said, it's great for stir fry and dipping. So I personally don't use them a lot. I use them only when I cook something that calls for a little sweetness, but also on the freshness side. I'll have to explore more recipes that will use the plum sauce, but it's um it's kind of good. 
good to try different sauce. It's not if you have to rank, it's definitely not my number one must have sauce, but it's good, good to have in your pantry. The next thing, whenever I cook pork belly, pork ribs, I'll definitely add this black bean garlic sauce. It's a fermented black bean, and you can tell I've used like till here, really the majority of this is already gone, so you you can tell I really love this. If you had those pork ribs um, at dim sum place, they will actually add this to the dish as well. To the pork ribs, that's created this deep fermented black bean garlic taste. And the next thing is soybean sauce. So personally, I haven't got the chance to try much about the soybean sauce, um, but sometimes the, a good saute recipe would call for this. So soybean sauce and the plum sauce are actually two sauces I do want it to try more recipe and creative ways to use those so I'll let you know once I explore them so the next big container of this is the fermented glutinous rice so we drink them around the Lunar New Year time frame and um, the way my family um, always cook it is um, to kind of warm this up to a boiling point and poacher egg to it it's a sweet fermented almost tastes like um, a little uh, licorice so that gives you a really complicated taste along with your poached egg um, it warms you up and when you're having a cold day or um, yeah like family gathering it's a great appetizer or dessert sometimes people put the uh, uh, sweet rice balls directly into this fermented glutinous rice soup as well. So the next thing is another chili garlic sauce. You can tell this is one of my favorite chili garlic sauce because I just really love the combination of garlic and chili. Both are pungent, both are kind of um, kills you in a good way, but I really 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 love this. And the last two items for Chinese sauces specifically I would say are some, some of the um, packaged pickles. So this is a spicy dried turnip. They taste pair great, great with congee or with any type of soup that doesn't have a strong flavor because it will dominate your flavor or your taste flavor. Um, so yeah, this uh, could be a good appetizer. And also this is a light flavored pickled mustard as well. So those two, I normally pair them with some um, with some congee, um, with yeah, whenever I feel like I, I wanted to some I wanted to have something light, I would use those paired with my congee. Okay, so the next section, that's all for the Chinese pantry paste items, but I do wanted to introduce some of other Asian sauces that's also a regular or essentials to my pantry. So this one here, I discovered this in H Mart, which is essentially a beef bibim sauce that once you chopped up all your ingredients here, poached an egg, you add this sauce on top, immediately takes you to that bim bim bomb experience. And I've personally tried it, highly, highly, highly recommend it, this bim bim sauce. You can find it in H Mart or you probably can find it online too. And the next thing, well a lot of you, if you saw my H Mart videos, this is, you will find yourself in Deja Wu because I Normally, every time I would I would find this sauce and I would buy another bottle to kind of ease my insecurity of not having this chicken flavor spicy sauce. It's just fantastic. Uh, there's no need to add extra adjectives to this. This de defines my character, I would say. Extra spicy chicken flavor sauce. And this salad dressing. It's sesame flavored dressing and it gives you that Japanese uh, sesame appetizer or salad tasting. I enjoyed it a lot so I normally just uh, whenever it go, runs out I grab another one as well. And another one from here is Thai style sweet chili sauce. Yeah whenever we make uh, spring rolls or any type of uh, Thai inspired dish we would add this as our dipping sauce. 
so I haven't tried so much of it. I mainly use it for one recipe that is spring roll. Uh, if you haven't checked out my res uh, recipes for Thai style spring roll, check out here on the top right. And here's another like red pepper paste that you will find yourself using um, to cook the rice cake, to cook anything. So this is a very essential like soy sauce to Chinese dish. This is to the Korean dish. You will find yourself use this red pepper paste to any type of soup base, saute base very very common ingredients for this and you can find it in H Mart or any type of um, a, um, a Korean supermarket okay so the last two items this is the Japanese mail I, I so you can't probably see the labels and all that but there's a giant baby that opening his or her arms to you that is you will know quite appetizing and you can see we are almost running out of this it's a little lighter than your not a uh, regular mayonnaise so um, it has great taste it's a Japanese mayo you can find it in any type of super uh, Asian supermarket the last but not least is not really an Asian pantry essentials but it goes very well with my other bottles and it's a cute little bottle from Chick-fil-A and I gotta say I give compliment to them um, their classic Chick-fil-A sauce is really good it pairs very well with some uh, sriracha and all that on my beef shank noodle recipe here all right if I really have to say like which one is my favorite I have to say it's um number one it's this chili garlic sauce as you can tell it's already gone like I love 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 this I put this on anything that I can think of so if you saw this bottle, make sure you grab one and try it on a different recipes and you, you can find a lot of the um, Asian paste inspired sautés or any type of cooking recipes in my previous videos. Just take a look at the, 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 the gallery and find something that you wanted to f try this weekend because, you know, self-care. Uh, it's very important that I find cooking is my way of uh, therapy. So yeah, if you agree with me, try something in my video. And the second favorite, I gotta say I have to give it to this red bean paste because it's so unique and irreplaceable in any of the sauces and it's the foundation of so many other paste or dipping sauce so it's just one of those things that you wanted to have in your fridge yeah the third favorite item I will have to say it's the black bean garlic sauce so I use this because whenever I cook my pork ribs this is just a must to add um, so yeah you know my top three now and in terms of preserve those um, open jars I would definitely highly recommend once you open them put it in the fridge just definitely squeeze them uh, close them fully and then put it in your fridge and store them there and once you open for like three months it's really um, not too good anymore so I would recommend use it within that time frame if possible okay the stay tuned for this series and next week we're gonna coming up for any powdered spices in building of your Chinese pantry and um, yeah start building with me and go on this culinary journey and um, I'll be with you and let me know in the comments if you've tried any of the, the bottles before actually or what is one bottle that you wanted to buy immediately all right friends if you haven't done so just smash that subscribe button turn on notification bell click like and leave comments below thanks for watching it's Jia here we'll see you next Friday We're getting closer.